Hi, welcome to the Linux Classroom. Today we're going to go over your first hands-on lab with our IoT device and this awesome Arduino board. We're looking right now at the lab documentation. This is the layout and the topology of what our project will look like when we are done. These are actually two projects um, back to back, but they're very similar. First thing you need to do is you need to download the Arduino software. Arduino IDE looks like. You can find the link in your documentation right here. You can just go to this website, download the latest software for either Windows, Linux, or Mac, and install it on your program. It's a typical um, login. So go ahead and do that. Once you have done that, we're going to start plugging in the Arduino board into our computer or laptop. So let's go ahead and switch over and look at our Arduino here. So here's our Arduino device. I expect that you already have the Arduino software installed. To get this connected, the first thing you do is you connect this end of the USB into the Arduino. Make sure it's fitted in there too. The first time you do it, it's a little tough. It's, it's rounded, it only goes in one way. Don't force it, but also it does take a bit push. It should look like that. You should see some lights turning on to show that you are connected and active, a green light and a yellow light there. Now let's go back to see what we look like on the desktop here in our Arduino IDE. So this is the Arduino IDE than what's currently uploaded. So things might look slightly different, but everything should still work uh, pretty much the same way. We need to go to tools. Now mine has a port option here. I know that the newest version of Arduino for Windows does not have this port option here. Um, but that's okay. This just means that your Arduino IDE, once you plug in your Arduino board, should automatically detect and board right here. You should see the Arduino Uno selected. And I believe in Windows, right next to it in parentheses, you should see COM1, COM3, COM4. So another way that you can check to make sure it's connected is you can look down here in the bottom corner, see where it says Arduino Uno on dev, TTY, ACMO. And that's kind of like the COM port or just the device port for Linux. Uh, if you're on Windows, it should say COM2 or COM3, COM4, COM1, something, or COM something. So just make sure that your board is connected, that your Arduino board is able to see your board and um, you're connected to it. Another way you can click on here is you can click on Tools, Get Board Info, and you should get a pop-up of this and it should recognize that you have an Arduino Uno and just some numbers here and things like that. And that shows that the software is able to, is, is connected and can read the board because we're going to be uploading software from here to the board and program it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. What we're going to do is we're going to try and blink a light on the board. Uh, the first, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load a program, an example program. So if we go to File, Examples, Basics, and then Blink, this is our code here. And we can look that over. You don't need to know anything about programming, um, but we will be editing some of the things here. Let's go back and look at our Arduino board and see what we're going to do here with this code. So there is a built-in LED light on our device right here. And you can see right here where my finger is pointing. That is on pin number 13. There should be a 13 that should be right next to it there. And so we need to identify that as pin 13. And then we'll have it blink on for a second and then blink off for a second. So let's go back to our code and see what we can do to get this to work. Looking at the code, we're looking at this pin number for the LED built-in. So that's the LED light that's built into the board. And we're trying to find the pin number for that LED light. When we looked at the board, the LED light is pin number 13. So what we need to do is we need to change every place in our code that says LED built-in to the number 13. So let's go ahead and do that. So now in three places we've changed LED built-in 
to the number 13. That identifies the pin number um, where that LED is located on the board. This delay is to turn the, the LED on for one second. That's what the 1000 is. And this second one, the low, is to turn the LED off for one second. And this is part of a loop. So what's going to happen is, is the light's going to turn on for one second, then off for one second, then on for one second, then off for one second. So it'll be blinking on and off, right? On for a second, off for a second. So what we can do is we can change these times if we want to. If we want to change the time to even on for two seconds, we can do that. Or So that would be 2,000. And let's say we want it off for half a second. We can do 500. And what this will do is it will blink the light once, or blink the light for two seconds, and it will be on for two seconds, and then off for half a second, and then on for two seconds, and off for half a second. And it'll continue to follow that pattern indefinitely. Again, we need to verify and validate our code, and then we can upload it, and we can jump over to our Arduino board, and we should see, Let's see if the blinking has changed here. Let me see if I could change the lighting. Let's see if we can see the blinking a little bit better here. There we go. Look, it's on, off, on, and it's only off for half a second, but it's on for a lot longer than it's off, right? Kind of this uneven blinking that we have, but we're able to control that light bulb however we want, that little LED. So that is the first part of our lab, is to get that 13-pin LED on the board blinking. The next part of our lab is we're going to be building an external LED light. Let's go ahead and look at our lab here. This is what we're going to be building. We're going to be using our white breadboard, which is that white uh, pegged board. And we're going to put an LED in there, a resistor, and some jumper wires to get this LED on our board blinking for us. To do this, we will need some connections. Now, let me walk through some of this wiring here. You will need your white pegged breadboard. And in this envelope, we'll need a few items from here as well. So we have three jumper cables here, but we actually only need two. So I'm going to set one aside. We need an LED doesn't matter what color. I have three different colors here. I'm just, I'm selecting the red one. And then you need a resistor. This one already has its legs bent. This one does not have its legs bent. It's okay. I'm just going to take the one that's already has it bent. And I'm going to set everything else aside. So this is, this is what we will need for our lab. So let's go back and look at our instructions. This is the layout that we need to do. So notice we have one jumper cable going from this GND. That's our ground and a negative connection. So we're going to connect one of the wires there. And we're going to then connect the other end to the breadboard. And then uh, we're going to have a resistor that's right there. And the res one leg of the resistor and that jumper cable, that negative jumper cable, need to be on the same row. A row goes this way across. It doesn't go this way, the long way. It goes the short way. And you can't, there's a divider here, so it can't go on this side either. Um, you can put other circuitry over there. So you really have um, just this row where everything can be connected. Then you, we have our resistor that's here. And then we have one resistor, which is on the same row as the short leg of the LED. And then we have the long leg of the LED on another row. And on that same row, we have the positive jumper cable right here. That's then connected to a three volt pin on our Arduino board and which will be supplying the power for our LED. And this creates a nice closed circuit. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the LED and I want to notice that there's a long leg and there's a short leg to this LED. The short leg is the negative, the long leg is the positive. That's right. So just remember when you plug it into and attach it to this breadboard, which side is the long leg, which one's the short leg, because that becomes very important in part of this lab. So I'm going to go ahead and take this 
And I'm going to just put this right into fretboard. Make sure it's seated in there properly. Don't push it too hard, but make sure that it's seated correctly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this resistor and I'm going to put one leg and line it up with the short leg. It's going to be in the same row as the short leg of the LED. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to be right next to it, but it just needs to be in the same row. And then the other leg I can just stick wherever. Right there. And make sure that they're seated in. We want to make sure that they have contact with the little metal connectors inside those little holes, peg holes. Okay, so you should have, again, you should have this side of the resistor line up in the same row as the short leg on the LED. The long leg of the LED, there should be nothing right now at this time on this row. And then this one right here, the other leg of the resistor should be right there. So now let's go ahead and hook our jumper cables. We want to plug in the negative one first. So we're going to take this first jumper cable and we're going to put it into the ground pin right there. And we want to put it into the same row as the far pin, as the far leg of the resistor right there. So just make sure that this is plugged in on the same row as this other leg of the resistor. That's very important. Then we'll take our other wire and we're going to put three volts through this LED. So we need to find the number three pin on this side. It has a little like squiggle and then three right next to it. That's for the three volts. So that's the number three pin. So we're going to go ahead and stick that on the number three. And then we take the other side and we line it up with the long leg of our LED. We'll go ahead and stick that in. It needs to be in the same row as the long leg of the LED. Now nothing's going to light up yet because our program isn't reflecting our setup here. So let's go back and take a look at our code. So here's our code. But remember, our code is designed for pin 13, the LED that's on the board. But our our new LED here is connected through this white cable to pin three. So we need to go back and change our code from 13 to pin three. Now, when we look at this, I'm going to change the time of it too, so that it blinks one second on, one second off. So now instead of identifying pin 13, we want uh, the current to go through pin three. So let's go ahead and compile and verify that code. Then we will upload it. Then we can go back to our Arduino board and our LED light should now be blinking one second on, one second off. And that is our LED. Blinking, pretty cool, right? Um, if we want to stop it blinking, we can simply flip the switch, right? At our home, we have a light switch, right? That shuts off the power and turns off the power to our our lights if we want to do that all we have to do is disconnect the power because this is the power having three volts if we want to turn it back on we just put it into the same row as that LED and it comes right back on and that is your lab if you want to you can go back and we can change the frequency of this LED light that's blinking you can have it blink longer or shorter or at a faster pace or whatever however you want it I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope this has uh, been beneficial to you, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.